Federal High Court in Abuja has directed INEC to identify and produce officials involved in registering underage voters during the continuous voters registration exercise. Hi, welcome to what's happening. These are the top 10 stories. At number one, the Federal High Court in Abuja has directed the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to identify and produce officials involved in registering underage voters during the continuous voters registration exercise. The court ordered that the implicated officials be handed over to law enforcement for investigation and possible prosecution. It also mandated INEC to expunge the names of underage voters from the National Voters Register and provide a certified true copy of the cleaned up register. The court's decision follows a lawsuit filed by Reverend Mike Agbon who discovered underage registration on INEC's website. INEC has 90 days to comply with the orders. At number two, Senior Advocate of Nigerian Kayo Diajulu has accused commissioners of forging Governor Akiridulu's signature during his medical absence, raising concerns about governance integrity. Ajulu contends that Deputy Governor Ayeda Tiwa hasn't constitutionally assumed power, suggesting a potential hijack of governance. He advocates for adherence to the necessity doctrine allowing the Deputy Governor temporary leadership to ensure transparency and continuity. Ajulu also calls for a thorough investigation by security agencies into the missing 7.5 billion naira to maintain accountability. At number three, former Kaduna State Governor Nasir Erufai, who controversially missed out on a ministerial appointment, is said to assume the role of a part time chairman of the board of Afri Venture Capital Company Limited. The announcement followed his non confirmation as a minister by the National Assembly for security reasons. Erufa revealed the company's mission is to finance, nurture, and mentor young innovators and entrepreneurs in Nigeria and Africa. Commencing in January 2024, the company will initiate its operations in Abuja. At number 4, Minister of Aviation and Aerospace Development Festus Kayamu has launched Nigeria's long-term low-emission development strategy at UN Climate Change Conference COP28 in Dubai. Kiyamu delivered a pivotal presentation at the African Pavilion, emphasizing Nigerians' commitment to transitioning from fossil fuels to low emission fuel across all sectors. Special Advisor on Digital Media to the Minister on Monday said the strategy document reflects the nation's dedication to sustainable and environmentally responsible practices. At number 5, the Nigerian Air Force NAV has denied allegations of mistakenly killing villagers in Kaduna State, labeling the reports as misinformation. NAV asserts that it has not conducted any air operations in Kaduna State and its environs within the last 24 hours. The incident purportedly occurring during a Malud celebration is yet to be officially confirmed by the Air Force. An emergency security meeting has been convened by the Kaduna state government to address the situation. At number 6, Speaker of the House of Representatives Tajuddin Abbas has called on governments, ministries, departments and agencies to enhance citizens' participation in the budget process. During a citizens' town hall meeting in the 2024 appropriation bill in Abuja, Abbas stated that the House aims to reinforce provision in the Fiscal Responsibility Act to improve public consultation and access to information during the budget cycle. He highlighted the importance of democracy and citizens' engagement in governance, encouraging careful analysis of the 2024 budget to ensure it reflects the needs and aspirations of all Nigerian citizens. At number 7, the federal government has settled 52 million naira in fines and compensation for 399 inmates at various correctional centers across Kaduna State as part of its efforts to decongest the centers. The controller of Correctional Service Kaduna State, Dr. Ado Sali, disclosed this during the inauguration of the initiative at Zaria on Monday. He said that 110 inmates were earlier released at Kaduna, adding that the ceremony in Zaria was a continuation of the program that was designed and implemented by the federal government. At number 8, the University of Calabar, Unical, has announced a tuition fee increase of over 100% for undergraduate students. Effective from the 2022-2023 and 2023-2024 academic sessions, the decision made at an emergency meeting of the university senate applies to both science and non-science courses. 
freshers, returning and final year students in non-science courses will now pay 111,000 Naira, 91,500 Naira and 114,000 Naira respectively along with third party deals. The management attributes the increments to current economic realities and the necessity to maintain the university's academic standards. At number 9, the president of Guinea-Bissau on Monday dissolved parliament ahead of fresh elections, saying an attempted coup has plunged the West African nation into a new crisis. President Omaru Sissoko Mbalo issued a decree closing down the opposition-dominated parliament and announced a date for legislative elections would be set at the opportune moment in line with the constitution. Violence had erupted between members of the National Guard and Special Forces of the Presidential Guard on Thursday night in the capital Bissau, leaving two people dead. Mbalo, who was in Dubai attending the COP28 climate conference, arrived back in Bissau on Saturday and announced that an attempted coup d'etat had prevented him from returning earlier. At number 10, the United States of America reaffirmed its commitment to promoting sustainable peace between Israel and Palestine, suggesting the adoption of a two-state solution. David Green chart the affair in Nigeria expressed concern over the ongoing violence and underscored the goal of ensuring that people in the region live in peace, security and dignity. The U.S. restated its commitment to working toward the two-state solution based on the 1967 Mutual Agreement Plan on Land Swap. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.